Well, good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome to uh, this month's listening and learning session. Uh, I am actually at Active Generations here in the city of Sioux Falls. I've done this listening and learning program a number of times at Active Generations, and, and it certainly is, is great to be back, uh, but it has been a while. And so uh, I am really thrilled to have a, a good crowd here and to ask me uh, just about anything that, that you want. Uh, Val is going to help us today. Uh, she'll walk around and, and hand out the microphone. Uh, but, but again, just so I can reiterate to all of you, uh, this is your opportunity to, to really engage the mayor uh, on, on any topics that you think are, are important uh, to you uh, as, as citizens, as taxpayers, as people that are, you know, are, are interested in, in your city. Uh, so again, I, I look forward to that and, and so much more. Uh, no topics are off limit. Uh, that's another deal. No topics are off limits, so we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, I can listen to you, I can learn from you, or I can answer any questions that you may have as well. So uh, um, uh, I, could, I could talk all day about all kinds of things happening in the city, uh, but rather than maybe doing that, why don't we just start right away by uh, come, talking about you know, things that are interesting to you or, or that are important to you. Uh, I hope somebody's got the, the guts and the willingness to, to ask me that, that first question. Uh, about the budget? Anybody? Well, ma'am, please. I'm thank sorry. you. No, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I don't need a microphone. Uh, I just read about the new budget. Yes. How, how does that work? Great. Thank, can I just ask for your first name? Lurleen. Lurleen. Yes. Well, Lurleen, thank you. Uh, wh where are you from, can I ask? Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls, great. Hey, well, I've been here a long time, so I... Lurleen, tell me, how long have you been here? Since 51. Since 51, okay. Well, Lurleen, uh, first of all, thanks for the question. I, it's very, very timely. Uh, we're talking about the budget, and we just got done last night uh, with the city council, and they uh, approved the budget with a few uh, modifications, a few changes to it. But reality is, uh, it, it is a large budget, uh, it is. It's the largest budget we've ever had in, in our city's history. Uh, and it's basically, it covers the operations of our city, uh, as well as all the capital needs of our city. You know, the, the roads, the sewer lines, the buildings, and, and stuff like that. Um, it, uh, we're in very good shape here financially in Sioux Falls. Which is, a, which is a truly a, a real, real blessing. Uh, we do have record revenues that are coming in, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, sales tax revenues, property tax revenues, that's really good. The revenues are strong. But at the same time, Lurleen, we're also challenged with, uh, you know, just unlimited wants and unlimited needs. Quit expanding. Uh, uh, Quit expanding. All right, Lurleen, let's, let's talk about that. Uh, uh, and but that's great. I love it. I love it, but uh, Lurleen, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get that. That was good. That was good. Um, but we do have unlimited wants and unlimited needs because the city is expanding, as Lurleen just mentioned, uh, and it is growing. Uh, I was actually, you know, in, in the restroom uh, talking with a, with a friend here just now, putting on my microphone, and the reality is, is that Sioux Falls, we are growing about three thousand. To 4,000 people a year, a year. Uh, Lorleen, I'm originally from Yankton, South Dakota, okay? And Yankton is about 15,000 people, okay? So we are basically creating a new Yankton every four years in the city of Sioux Falls. And so if you can imagine that, that means you're, you're creating the roads of a Yankton. Uh, the sewer lines of a Yankton, uh, the schools, the parks, the fire, the police, the libraries, we're building a new Yankton in Sioux Falls every four years. And so I've been your mayor about five and a half, so we've created like a Yankton and a half in, in just five and a half years. Uh, well, I, I don't know if I'd created it, uh, but, but I've certainly been the mayor uh, during that time. And Lurleen, uh, uh, Sioux Falls, what Lurleen said, and we probably didn't get that all, but she said, you know, quit expanding, quit expanding. And, and I think that's, I've, I've heard that before, Lurleen, I have. Um, but I think the reality is, 
is that Sioux Falls, uh, whether you like it or not, uh, this, this town has always expanded. Uh, this town has always grown. Uh, that is why you're here, Lurleen, and that's probably why all these folks are here, is because we are a growing, vibrant, progressive city uh, that is serving not only the needs of Lurleen, uh, but serving the needs of, of many, including the folks around here. Uh, this is the place where people want to live. It is the place where people want to work. Which and it is advertising that we're the best city. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not going to ever do that. I'm sorry. What Lurleen said, uh, if you didn't catch that, uh, is that she's, he, she said, hey, quit advertising that we're one of the best cities in America. Um, sorry, Lurleen, I'm not. Uh, I love this city. What? I love this city. And I'm proud of this city, and, and I love the things that we've been able to accomplish as, as a town, uh, not only during you know, my five and a half years, but, but for generations. Uh, it's, a, it's a great city, so many good things going on. Uh, but Lurleen has got a valid point. She does. The city is growing. And when you grow, there's a lot of challenges that come with that growth. There definitely are. And I think probably Lurleen and others are kind of feeling some of the, the pressure or anxiety uh, around growth and change. Uh, and, and that's hard. So I respect what you're saying. I do. Good job. I'm proud of you for getting us kicked off. That's, yes. Uh, just w one, one second. Let's get you that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A little levity on May 8th. You created Ukulele Day, and we gave you a gold ukulele. Now, the question is, have you been practicing because next, this May, at a birthday party here, we'd like to do Sonny and Cher, and have you do Cher and Drag. And, I, and, I, and I've heard that, and I've heard that. And, and first of all, thank you. We went from a really, really serious question to one that is less serious, so, so you know, bless you for that. Uh, uh, How about you, I was, I was honored uh, here at Active Generations back in May uh, as... Uh, I was given an honorary ukulele uh, member, and, uh, and I, it's great, and I, and I do thank you. But I was asked, one of the very first things that I was asked was, hey, Mayor, are you practicing your ukulele? And I said, no, uh, I'm just not. And I, I'm so sorry, uh, sorry, Coach, sorry, Coach, but I'm not. Um, but I, I, was, I, I was thrilled by the opportunity uh, to do that. W one of the great things about being the mayor uh, of this town, and I just love it, you know I do, uh, is that every new day is unique. Uh, uh, if I wasn't the mayor, I probably wouldn't have been, uh, you know, put on your ukulele team. Uh, no, I probably wouldn't have, uh, but I'm blessed by it, so, so thank you. The answer to that is no, I'm not practicing the ukulele, and no, I won't do it in drag at your, uh, at your next event. But I would, I'd be welcome to, I'd love to come back. I'd love to come yeah, back, but thank you. you thank you for the honor, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, please. Hello, Mike, nice to see you Nice again. to see you too, thank yes. you. It's not on, is it? Uh -huh. uh, yes, yes it, it, uh, it, again, this is just for the purposes of the, uh, the recording. It's not so much a microphone for the audience, but thank you, please. I will talk louder then. No, you're doing great. Um, Mike, as I drive around the city, I'm just concerned about weeds. <laughs> Love it. People letting their weeds grow over the curbs into Love major it. roads and stuff. And I know we have a policy to complain about it, but I'm apprehensive. My, if I'm not their neighbor, I'm thinking, well, what right do I have? They're going to think their neighbor did this. It might cause a neighbor fight. I don't know. I just, and I know uh, our curb is right like this where they come and, you know, we have just a little short curb, but um, it's connected right to the yeah. road, so they come and spray it. And I, hate, I don't like chemicals, so I try to get out there and make sure I got those weeds pulled before they start coming. I, but the ones they can mow, but they just let the weeds grow over the curb of the road, and I don't know how to, you know. And then I got one other concern. Well, let me finish with that one. <laughs> First of all, if, if you don't mind, if I can just address sure. that one. Sure. I, I drive around the town uh, probably as much as anybody. And I, I'm so proud, Lurleen, I'm so proud of this town. I love, you know, the things that are going on, and I'm really proud of our, of our beauty. Uh, and, and yes, our cleanliness, I, I really am. But I do question uh, but, you know, why some folks don't care about you know, weeds or those curbs or, or that as much as you and I do. Uh, it is reality. 
We are, some people have different priorities. Uh, some people have different um, um, uh, strengths or skills, as well as some people maybe don't even have the physical ability to take care of the property as much as as much as others. But but I do ch I do challenge everybody uh, is that you know please realize that that if you maintain your properties, it is going to give incentive for everybody else around you to do the same thing. It really really will. Uh, you can't imagine that when somebody you know, uh, uh, repairs their porch or their, their put on new siding or they put in a fresh coat of paint, how it incents everybody else around them to do the same thing. Uh, now, here is the reality though. Not everybody is going to be as good a neighbor as you want them to be. Uh, some are going to have overgrown grass or weeds. Uh, some are going to have a junky car that's been sitting in their driveway forever. That's uh, even me sometimes. I, 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 you know, I, I got a lot to do, and or I get depressed or something. And or, just don't or get something. Out. Yeah, there's yep. people that are depressed that, and they just can't get. To exactly, it. but but there are going to be those neighbors who, for some reason, don't take care of their properties. They don't mow their lawn. They don't shovel their snow. Whatever it would be, I would ask you this. Even though you may not want to, you know, cause a ruckus, here's what I'd ask you to do: call into the city and just let us know. Okay, we'll keep it confidential. Uh, we, we will work with that homeowner or that party to try to get them to understand that, that, that they do need to uh, obey the, the codes or the policies of this town. They do. And, and, and it's the right thing to do. You know, for example, if, um, if the winter is coming, winter is coming, and the reality is, is that there are some neighbors who won't shovel their snow and it creates ice, and when it does, it is very, very dangerous uh, for people of the active generation, for people that are, that are blind, for people that have challenges, but also for, for young kids that are walking to school or, or whatever it would be. And those people, if they're gonna own a home in this city, they have to maintain that property and they have to shovel that snow. And if they don't, let us know, and we'll work with them to, to make sure that they do. Uh, so again, please, uh, Sioux Falls, you know, help us out. Help us out. Take great pride in your city, and, uh, and ju just like you'd recommend. So thank you. Yeah. N another question, well, please. Well, my other one is about unhealthy eating. I mean, unhealthy. I'm concerned about the health of the entire sure. nation. I've lived overseas, and I tell you, Americans, uh, a lot of it has to do with, I mean, it, it's marketing, drinking pop really is not good for anybody. <laughs> Sugar, water, and artificial food coloring. Um, I, I know the mayor of, was it Philadelphia or something when the whole city went on a diet and uh, I don't think his diet so much as healthy. I, I just really, I mean, I live like a block and a half away from Hy-Vee. I'd love to go there to work. I need a job. But I couldn't stand what I see people buy. Yeah. When Pop's on sale, they load their car. It just blows my mind. I just, I'm, I'm just concerned about our country. I mean, seriously, we are falling down. We're putting a lot of money into things that are not making us healthy. And we got enemies around the world. I've lived around the world, and there are enemies that, you know, we're not going to be just able. We can't even get enough men in the military because of the, of the weight issue, you know, people healthy eating, unhealthy eating and stuff. So I, I, think, that, I, that. I think your comments are, are fair. We, we know uh, in the city of Sioux Falls, in the state of South Dakota, uh, that we are challenged with healthy living, healthy eating. Uh, some of the challenges that we face in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota are, are a couple of them are this. We do have an obesity problem, not only amongst adults, but more and more we have an obesity problem with young people. You know, people that, that you're going, wait a second, these people should be, these youngsters should be active. They should be out there playing, looking for night crawlers, playing football, scraping their knees, you know, whatever. Um, we know that. Juvenile diabetes is becoming an issue. Type 2 diabetes is becoming an issue. Um, uh, smoking, whatever, there's all these challenges when it comes to our health. We are investing more and more in Sioux Falls to try to uh, help us become a healthier city. And not only trying to educate people on, on how to eat better or how to live uh, 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 a more healthy lifestyle, but we're also investing in things in our city such as creating bike lanes. Uh, what in bicycle lanes uh, on our roads, uh, investing more in bike trails, 
uh, adding more green space in parks, all in the spirit of trying to get people to, to be enticed by walking to work or dr riding to work versus driving their truck or their car to work. Uh, that's one of the challenges. If you go to Europe, you know, for example, they are, they are healthier than, than we are in America. They, they just are. They are. They, they walk more. They ride, they ride their bikes more. They take public, they take public transportation more. Uh, they don't all have a, one car or one truck, or in my case, two trucks. Uh, they don't. And so, you know, they, they do, they, they are healthier. And they eat healthier foods, too. Uh, but um, one thing I'm not going to do, uh, and I'm not going to recommend, is that we, you know, put a, uh, put a moratorium that you can't sell a certain, you know, uh, size pop, like they've done in, in New York City, for example. I'm not going to do that, because uh, we are, you know, we're pretty set in our ways here. We'll, we'll do what we think is, is right for our families or for ourselves. But I think to your point, we, we are going to keep, trying to educate people the importance of, of a healthy lifestyle. So thank you, good job. Thank you, others, anything? Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Will, uh, will we write, that's a good one, that's a good one. I have a question regarding the uh, traffic. I know yes. the city is growing, you just addressed that. And I happen to live uh, right near here, just east of O'Gorman. And uh, 41st Street has become a real congested area. Oh. And uh, I was wondering, about the long-range plans. I know uh, East 26th Street, that's in 2019, but I was just wondering the long-range plans for 41st Street traffic from Minnesota to Great Tijuana. job. Your first name, please? Al. Al. Folks, if you didn't hear that, Al, is a great question. Al said, hey, Mayor, we are growing as a city. What about the traffic, the congestion, you know, the ability to get from point A to point B, especially where Al lives? over there by uh, O'Gorman, 41st Street, you know, that, that area. Uh, Al, you're flat out right. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm your mayor, okay? And I stay away from 41st Street as much as I possibly can. I do, I do. I stay away, especially on the weekends. Uh, you are not gonna find, you know, this mayor driving around by the, by the Empire Mall on, on the weekends very, very rarely. Uh, it, just, it just is. Al, what we're doing is a couple of things, okay? We are having to invest more and more money, of course, in these roads, making them wider, more turning lanes, uh, um, making them safer, things like that, number one. Number two, we are investing, Al, a, a bunch of money more and more into technology. Uh, it's interesting, but now we actually have cameras on some of these m major roads like 41st Street and we're actually evaluating the traffic patterns on 41st Street, on 26th Street, places like that, Minnesota Avenue, in the spirit of trying to keep Sioux Falls moving, okay? And so we're using traffic light technology to help us keep, keep, you know, keep cars going. But here's, Al, here's something else that we're doing specifically probably for, for you. Um, Here's the reality, and Lurleen, you're not going to like this. <laughs> you're not going to like this. But we are growing, you know, for example, we're, we're adding retail in other parts of town, okay? Uh, and what I mean, like Dolly Farms over on the east side of town. Uh, you know, on the northwest part of town, we've got the new Super Walmart up there and, and all those things, so we're growing out there. We're certainly growing to the, uh, to, to the, uh, to the uh, south as well, and yes, the west. In the spirit of trying to get some of the traffic away from this area so that people can buy stuff somewhere else. Uh, now, the folks around the, your area that, that sell stuff, they don't like that, and I respect that, but in reality, we do have to take some of the pressure off of that area. And uh, so, you know, Al, that's good. That's good. Can I, did you drive here? Did you drive here? Yes. You, you could, uh, can I ask you, Lord, could you go back there? Thank you. So, you drove here yes. today, and yes. you drive around town. Yes. Uh, I, and I, I'm not going to ask your age. You look good. You're a young buck. I love that. <laughs> but Thank you. Can I, so, is there a part of town that you don't like driving in, and, and it almost, not scares you, but you just, you just kind of stay away from two? No, I don't have a problem driving any place. Good, good. But uh, if you had any suggestions for me as your mayor about 
uh, traffic and keeping Sioux Falls moving, what would you recommend? Anything? Well, that's a tough issue, uh, I realize. 41st Street, you can only widen it so much, and you have that, that Kiwanis uh, area there. That's, that's the worst area, because from that point on, all the way back to Minnesota, is usually quite a, uh, Fridays and uh, Saturdays, is, is a, lot, a large uh, lineup. So I usually take the lights uh, in order to get here, or wherever, but uh, just to drive on let's say from Lincoln Avenue onto 41st Street, it's just about impossible on Fridays. Yeah. I, I know people like you in, but still, uh, it's, it's still a, a tough job. And so I, I really don't have a solution either. Well, Al, thank you. You know, I will mention this, and ma'am, we're going to come to you right, and then I'm going to come to you. Um, I am going to mention this, and uh, probably going to make some people mad. Don't get mad at me, Lurleen. But I'll probably... You know, one of the things that I really wish we would improve on in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota is just the way that we, we treat other drivers. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, Cindy and I, we went on a vacation to California, okay? And I know there's these perceptions of Californians, and we actually found them quite, quite, quite nice, quite warm, very cordial. Um, and here's what we also found. They were very good drivers. They really were. They were respectful. You know, it, it, here it seems like I put my blinker on to, to change lanes, and I put my blinker on because I want to get from from uh, from the left side or from the left side to the right side for some reason. If I put my blinker on, I've got people speeding up behind me to to try to make sure that I can't get in. You know, and they don't know me. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> But it's like, no way am I letting that guy in. No way, you know. And you're going, you're going, really? Or what happens? People don't use their blinkers. Uh, sorry, no, no pointing, no pointing, no raising your hands. They don't use their blinkers, or they don't yield. Uh, or, in my mind, the worst offense that there is is they run red lights. Uh, at the highest level. I mean, you can get anywhere in this town in 15 to 20 minutes, anywhere. I don't care what time of, what time of day it is or what day, of the, you can get anywhere in 15 to 20 minutes. But we have people that will run red lights like crazy. Um, and so, you know, Al, uh, if I could do anything, wave a magic wand, yeah. I'd give us all, you know, good driving habit uh, 101. Uh, and I, I'm, I mess up too, I know I do. I know I do, but I, I think that's one of the things that we really could, could work on here, Al. So, so thank you. Good job. Please. Yeah. And, and by the way, these are, I love these questions. Thank you. Even the ukulele one, I, I like that one. So, yes. I just heard about that they're opening up west, uh, this street right out here across to Minnesota, which would help keep traffic off of 40 Street. First, but I've heard about that for a long time. Yep. I wonder why. What's the delay? It's in the works. I, and then another question is: I've heard two different versions of removing railroad tracks. Are they just moving the switching yard, or are they taking out all tracks? Good job. You folks are engaged in your community. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Two questions. Uh, the first one involved 49th Street. Um, from it would be Minnesota to to Western, 49th Street from Minnesota to Western. You know, Mayor, when's that road going to open up? Uh, it is going to be a while. It is. Um, I, you know, we were worried. Costco, of course. You know, Costco is over there now, and and we were actually kind of worried about how how was that going to impact the traffic uh, there. And uh, reality is, it's actually turned out. Uh, better than we ever hoped. Here's our challenge with that particular road and that particular intersection. And if you can imagine, 40, uh, Minnesota Avenue, okay, can everybody picture Minnesota Avenue near, the, near that 49th Street? What is, what is right next to it? Get, the, get that on camera, would you? Come on. <laughs> what? We're seeing interstate. The interstate, hallelujah. That is our challenge. The, actually, we've got a great interstate there, 229. We're very blessed by it. But the reality is, is that that road and the roads around it, 
uh, were not set up to support a city of 175,000 people uh, with growing traffic needs all the time. And until we address that, Minnesota and those connections around that interstate, the last thing we want to do is get 49th Street, you know, rocking and rolling with four, with four lanes. Because if you think it's bad now, it would be, it would be you know, complete chaos. Uh, and so that's our challenge there. It is, and, and it's probably, we're working with the state right now and the federal government right now to try to improve those intersections around 229 on Minnesota, on Cliff, as well as on others, but it is gonna take us some time. Uh, it is, and, and so thank you. That was a great question. And then the second one was, uh, and your first name again, please? Gladys. 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 Gladys's second question was this. Mayor, I've heard different things about the rail yard redevelopment thing downtown and those tracks down there. What's really happening? Uh, and here's what's really happening. First of all, we've signed the deal with Burlington Northern. It's a done deal, which is a, which is a, I, I'm just so thrilled by that. It's been going on since 2005. It's done. Uh, so here's what's going to happen now. Now Burlington Northern, they've got about two years to remove almost all of the tracks, okay? Almost all, but not all, okay? There's still gonna be two railroad tracks on that, towards the east side, okay? Those two railroad tracks are going to remain, okay? So I know some people thought, oh, that means there's gonna be no railroad traffic anymore. That is not the case. We are still gonna have railroad traffic going through our city, through our downtown, on those two tracks there uh, in, in downtown. The rest will be removed, they will. They'll all be removed by, by Burlington Northern over the next 18 months to two years. Uh, and then uh, about six months prior to that, we're gonna start to really uh, start to plan what will go down there. Because it's 10 acres of land, 10 acres of land right in the heart of our downtown. And so we're going to develop that in, 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 a, in a unique way. Um, so still will be traffic. There will still be two train tracks remaining, and all those others will be taken out. Good job. Thank you. I love that. I love that you're engaged in your town. Great job. Others? Yes, I, we're, going to go to, we're going to go to Bob. He had, he had a great question. How are we doing with the swimming pool? The swimming pool? Is there going to be enough parking space? Bob, thank you. Very good. Did, did, if you didn't hear that, Bob was wondering, hey, what about that new swimming pool, Mayor? And as well as, he had a caveat, is there going to be enough parking at our new swimming pool? And it's the indoor pool, the indoor pool, okay, uh, there, at, there at Spellerberg Park, okay. Bob, uh, it's going very, very well. In fact, Active Generation folks, you got to get a big old bus trip uh, organized to take people to, uh, to that new pool and check it out because it is, it is going to be grand. Uh, it will be the nicest indoor swimming pool. And is there going to be a whirlpool too with oh, it? Oh, God. Great question. Great question. Uh, it's going to be a grand, grand place. It'll be the best for 500 miles, okay? And yes, it will have indoor water therapy. Uh, it'll have swimming lanes. It'll have a swim park. Uh, it'll have places to have meetings, uh, places to have birthday parties. Uh, it, it, it's going to be a, a beautiful, beautiful facility. Uh, and now to your, to your question, parking. Let's talk about parking. Um, the question that Bob asked, so Mayor, okay, is there going to be enough parking? Yes, there will be. One of the things that we were, were very insistent upon in terms of that location is we were looking at the parking, uh, as well as uh, the traffic flow, okay? Because that's a busy area too, with uh, with uh, Sanford Health, uh, with the VA, and, and as well as people that, that live all around there. So yes, that we we are feel very confident about the parking, very confident about the traffic flow. There will be changes. There will, uh, but we are adding more parking uh, to try to maximize that as much as we can. But we're very confident that that we're going to be fine with with the parking. Um, one thing, though, that, that is reality is that I don't think we're going to have any problem with people using the pool. 
Uh, it is going to be used in a big, big way. And not just by young people. I think, the, I think the group that may enjoy it more than anybody else are you folks. Seniors. The seniors. The active generation. It is one thing that, in, and I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting older, and the things that I, and I'm still very active, but one thing that I'm realizing is that when I get hurt now, whether it be running, playing tennis, or, or just being your mayor, uh, my recovery time isn't as good anymore. Uh, it isn't. And the things that I used to do to recover my body, uh, now my doctor's saying, don't, you know, don't do that. Uh, and time and time again, they'll say, hey, mayor, hop in the pool. Or, hey, Mike, hop in the pool, do water therapy. And I know that of active generations, that's one of the things that you folks work on, too, is that water therapy. And so I think that you're going to find the active generation, including our veterans, okay, including our veterans, they will find great value with our indoor pool, as well as our indoor uh, uh, warming uh, pools as well, therapeutic pools. That'll be important. So, uh, yes, it'll be done by the fall of 2016. So a year from now, a year from now, you're all invited to your pool, your pool. Okay, you're all invited. In fact, let's, will you make sure that we, they all get a bus trip? Okay, okay. You're all, we're, all come, we're all going swimming a year from now in our pool. So I, great job. I'll make sure it gets on the calendar. I'm sorry? I'll make sure it gets on the You'll calendar. You'll make sure it gets on the calendar. Thank you, thank you. Great job, great job. <laughs> yes, so now, let's see, who isn't, uh, anybody, else, who hasn't had an opportunity? I'll come back, I promise. I'll come back to you too. Who? Let's go over here first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go right over here. Yes, thank you. Thank you. My name is John. A few years ago, they had a stoplight down, uh, with a camera on it. Yes. Uh, whatever happened, or is the city just not going to do it? What's the deal? I haven't heard any. Good job, John. Uh, John asked, uh, uh, a, a few years ago, there was a cam there was a, a, a light with a camera on it, uh, and John, you're exactly right. Are you from Sioux Falls, John? No, uh, not originally. W where'd you come from? Uh, Vermillion, but uh, I've been in cities where they had the cameras. Yes, sir. And now I guess they got one on the interstate down there by the border. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, John, John is right. In our city, we used to have a camera. Uh, right down there by the Argus Leader, uh, there on Minnesota on Minnesota Avenue, and it was done with the intent to try to catch those who red light runners. That was the goal was to catch those red light runners. And and uh, you know I personally, and again I'll probably get in trouble here. I probably will, but I personally I was in I was in favor of it. I was. Now I know I probably made some of you mad just now. I get it. I get it. But I was in favor of it because I know. Uh, that I personally slowed down more and was more cognizant knowing that that camera was there. Um, now, but they're, they're in the state of South Dakota now, the legislature, John, uh, they, they did, uh, they, they don't want them. And that includes in Sioux Falls. Uh, so those, those, they used to call them red light running cameras. Uh, they're no longer in Sioux Falls. They're no longer here. Will they ever come back? I don't know. I, um, you know, one of the greatest challenges that happened uh, was that, number one, uh, people were getting ticketed, uh, and what they would say is that, well, that wasn't me driving. Uh, it was somebody else. You know, it may have been my car, but it wasn't me driving. And so that caused some, some issues. Uh, uh, you know, others were, were questioning the, val the, the validity of it. Um, but, but again, well, I think that this is reality. Well, one thing that, that is real is that um, this technology uh, that we're, it, it's here to stay. It's not going away. And uh, I mean, one of the things that just still, it freaks me out is Google Maps. You know, I, it'll tell me how to get from point A to point B by pressing a button. And it just, it, it just amazes me how that, how that works. Well, reality is technology, John, more and more is going to become part of what we what we deal with, and uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll be able to catch speeders someday without even having 
you know, the police officers out there. Maybe there will be these, who knows, maybe it's going to be a drone. Oh, I hope not. You know, a drone flying in the air and, and basically, you know, being our police force. I don't know. Uh, it frightens me, but, but I think it is reality too, John. But those are gone. Those are gone. Yes, sir. Thank you. I've been in big cities where they have cameras, uh, like on, let's say, downtown on the street, you know, and uh, I thought it made the place safer. Yes. Yes. You know, I've been, and I told a guy, he said, well, you, you didn't like him. I said, what did you do wrong? <laughs> to me, I mean, I didn't pay no attention to him. You know, I figured it was for my safety. Yes. Has that ever been brought up here? It does, John, it does. John had asked, you know, he, he just feels that it was a safety deal, that it improved the safety. Uh, and yes, John, it's discussed a lot. Um, probably the biggest argument that I hear is that, you know, they don't want Big Brother uh, watching, watching our every move. Uh, they, they don't. Uh, but I think reality is more and more, uh, you can't believe how you're, you're walking around and you're on camera. I'll, I'll bet I'm on camera right now. Uh, maybe I'm not, but I'll bet I am. Um, Actually, you're well, not. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not there. I'm on, no, I'm on there. But there's, Actually, yes. You're not here. Oh, maybe I'm not. Okay, not thank here. you. Thank you. Good job. But I think that is the reality. And so it'll be an interesting debate. Uh, I think that this will be one of those things that we'll talk about in the city more and more. Uh, I know that in city government buildings, we are becoming more and more concerned and aware of our safety. Uh, John, uh, I mean our safety, and and it's it's something that you, you know uh, you worry about. It. I'm I'm your mayor. Well, how many cameras and, does well, <laughs> there there are there's there's cameras out there. Uh, the question was so how many cameras does the city have? They're they're out there, and uh, you know because we talked about we talked about on the roads on the roads. Right now, there's some of these roads that, that we've got cameras going all the time, uh, and we're going to put more out there to try to uh, use that technology to help us, you know, keep Sioux Falls moving, um, but also maybe even, you know, keep, keep Sioux Falls safe. Um, uh, so, yeah, good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, do we have the money for the pool? Do we have all, all right. the money for the pool? Let's, let's start there. Your first name, please. Jim. Jim. You bet, Jim. Uh, you from Sioux Falls originally? Yes. Great. Jim, uh, actually one of the, probably one of the, <laughs> I, I strongly believe, and, and I actually told this to the Argus leader today, um, and, I, and I strongly believe it. And I am your mayor, and I am proud of the city, but I'll just flat out tell you, I don't believe that there's a stronger government financially than Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Right? I, I just don't. Uh, we are very, very strong financially. And it wasn't just during my administration. It was before, too. You know, Mayor Munson, Mayor Hanson, Mayor Noby. We are a very prudent, uh, fiscally responsible, cautious, uh, uh, risk-averse society here. In, in South Dakota and Sioux Falls. So the question that was asked was, well, do we have enough money to pay for that pool? Um, we're actually paying cash for that pool, cash. We're not borrowing any money for that pool. We're, we're paying cash for it. Uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible. Uh, now, it is going to be an expensive, we can build it, that's one thing, okay? But you also have to, yes, you have to maintain it and you have to operate it. That is as expensive, if not more, and so then you worry about, so, so can you operate it? Can we, it, it, it? can we afford it? And the answer to that is yes. Can we afford to hold it? Oh, yes, and, and absolutely. You, and we'll, let's, let's end, we'll answer that one, too, and I'll come back over there. But absolutely, um, we can afford the pool. Uh, it is a quality of life investment, not only for young people, but for seniors alike. Um, and, and let me go back here. Let me go back. It is amazing. We have the, all these outdoor pools in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And they're, barely, they're, they're hardly open. Because 
our weather is not conducive to outdoor swimming here. It isn't. You know, we, we love it during the summer, during those few days that we get, but the reality is, is that there's no one swimming outside today in Sioux Falls. And this winter, there will be no one swimming outside then either. So going back to our health, you know, our health, Let's provide some opportunities for young and old alike, black or white alike, rich or poor alike. Let's provide some opportunities for people to, to, to do something in the wintertime uh, to, to stay engaged, uh, to stay healthy, to have some fun, and to have a good quality of life with the day that God gave them. Uh, so it's kind of a long-winded answer, but absolutely we can afford it, and we are. Good job. I got uh, another question. Uh, I got about three streets that uh, are deteriorating now. I know you've done a good job on streets. No, thank you. And uh, we got a lot of streets to take care of. So, but I just noticed that East 26, from, uh, Southeastern Drive to Sycamore, is deteriorating, I know it. and East 10th Street from Cliff to Sycamore is deteriorating. Uh, it's that one is terrible. Yes, the uh, to your point. Uh, I think we've made great progress, you know, repairing, rebuilding the, the streets of our town. Right now we're at about 300 miles of roads that we've repaired in just the last, you know, five years. But the reality is we've got 75 square miles of road. Uh, you know, th this town is a, it's a big town and there's roads everywhere. Um, and we've got some that need to be repaired. Like that East 10th, that is terrible. It's it's a it just it's it's really really bad out on the way to Dolly Farms. I know what you're talking about. Um, so here's what we do: we try to prioritize those limited tax dollars as best we can. One of the things that we are doing right now, and going back to technology, we actually hired a firm that has a it's a it's a van, and I think you if you see it, look for it. It's got the lights are going to be flashing, and it's a van. And what it's doing, it is driving every single road in our town, and it is basically evaluating the road. It's driving over it, and it's evaluating it. It's, it's finding the potholes, it's finding the cracks, it's, finding the, it's determining its condition using technology so that what we can do is bring all that information back and then prioritize our spending uh, with those taxpayer dollars so that we can attack the worst roads, the busiest roads first in order to get a bigger bang for your taxpayer buck. Because today what we do is we have people drive around and they, they, you know, they try to evaluate it based on you know, their own gut and feel and what they see and then they come back and then we kind of prioritize it. But it's not the most scientific uh, uh, results that you can get. With this new technology now we'll be able to really analyze what are the roads that need our help the absolute most. Uh, and then we'll throw in the traffic patterns in terms of volume. And then we'll put your hard earned taxpayer dollars where they deserve to be. So good job. Thank you. Another one? Those are good questions. Yeah. Uh, well, there's one other street from Bonson from uh, East 10th to 26th Street. Pretty needs to be resurfaced. Well, guess what? There's a lot more than that. <laughs> There's a lot more than that. If you go to, you know, for example, if you go to downtown Sioux Falls, uh, in my mind, if I, go, if I go west on Minnesota in downtown Sioux Falls, you know, Minnesota Avenue, if I go west uh, in, in that cathedral, you know, cathedral, cathedral Pettigrew Heights in that area, there are some roads that I, I just, oh my, they're just, they're not good. And our issue is that now we've got winter coming again. And what does that mean? Freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw, you know, boom here, boom there. And so uh, we've got to keep investing. Well, we've got to keep repairing, rebuilding. But I, I like how far we've come, but, but hang in there. And uh, can I ask you a favor, Sioux Falls? Please call into the city when you see these, these potholes. Please call in. We still have uh, about a month of pothole fixing that we can do, about a month. We've, about mid-October, we kind of have to stop. We do. Because um, the weather, you know, Mother Nature creeps in. Uh, but we still got time. So call the pothole hotline. Call the city when you see those potholes. Good job. Thank you. The great questions. Appreciate it. Others? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, We've got to get you on. Sorry, buddy. Just one more comment about the uh, cameras. 
Yes. I know this happened downtown with one of the sculpture walk. Yes. And that one kid that tipped that sculpture over was yes. caught. I know it was some retail outfit that owned that camera, but how was that guy caught from a camera? Right? Yeah. And then, and then the other question has got to do with street. And you've been talking about like 26 and 229 intersection that comes up. Was there any thought about like 33rd from Yeager Road going east, connecting the two? 33rd to Yeager Road, the Yeager Road. You could go Cliff Avenue going east down the down the hill. Yes. Okay. Okay. And at the bottom, you go okay north up Yeager Road. Oh yeah. That parallels Interstate. Yes. But then, and then you look straight across, right over what is it? Uh, that Lee Erickson. Yes. And you go straight straight across. 33rd on the other side kind of lines up. Yes. I know that'd be a long time down the road before that's ever. Well, these are, these are all these things that as we look at how our town is growing, especially the inner core, we are trying to evaluate all of our streets too to figure out is there a more efficient way to, to move traffic. Uh, um, River Road or Southeastern, I, I'll never forget that. There was a, we used to only allow traffic to go you know, one lane this way, one lane that way. And it was a road that we had in Sioux Falls for years. Well, all of a sudden, and it was very, very busy, uh, all of a sudden one of the traffic engineers decided, you know, what if we, you know, we've got enough room, why don't we just put two lanes going this way and one lane going that way? And it was, it was just sitting there as an opportunity, but yet we, we, we never took advantage of it. You know, kind of like what you're talking about. Are there, are there opportunities that we can take advantage of that will help make us a better city? And we're going to continue to, to look at that, uh, you know, that low-hanging fruit. Um, but some of the bigger challenges, for example, on 229 in Cliff, that's another over there by uh, Lincoln High School. Oh, my goodness, that's another one. Trying to make a left turn to get on the interstate uh, as you're right before Lincoln High School, that's where I get worried about, you know, my own, uh, my own life. Uh, trying to get trying to get there, but you know what's interesting? Here's what's kind of interesting: those places that you would think would be the most dangerous, we actually have some of the fewest accidents. I think because people are more concerned, more cautious, you know, with not only their safety but others as well. Yeah, so good job. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Others, uh, John. You, uh, any uh, before I? Yes, I, I'm going to come right back to you. We'll go right back there next. Yes, thank you. Hi, um, I'm wondering, are you ever going to widen 26th Street there, right before Southeastern, going east, like over the river and stuff? Well, um, I, that is, when I'm done being your mayor, okay, uh, when I'm done being your mayor, uh, and it's coming soon, two and a half years, uh, we are going to tackle probably the biggest, most challenging road project and it's right there uh, on Southeastern, 26th Street, the interstate, the Big Sioux River, railroad tracks. It is the big behemoth. They want to go uh, there, they? And, and it's going to be a it's going to be a big one. Uh -huh. And so that whole area is basically going to get transformed into something new for our town. And uh, uh, but it's going to start. Right when I'm done being your mayor, <laughs> so uh, and that wasn't done. Per it, it just that's what we're planning on. So that whole area is gonna have to become, you know, um, more efficient, uh, wider streets, uh, you know, more traffic light technology, um, you know, bridges like you'd see in a in a larger city and roads. Um, I don't think we're gonna have some monster loop like you'd see in Dallas, but we're gonna have to do some things. Yeah, uh, and, uh, so it's going to be interesting because you've got uh, you've got you've got 229, you've got the river, you've got the railroad, you've got people living there, you've got parks, you've got businesses, and it's like they're all converging in one big spot. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have to tackle that. So good job, others. Okay, um, where are the tracks that they're going to leave? Where are those going to be at? You mean downtown? After they're done, yeah, I'm like going the, the far east side. The far east side. There's two two tracks on the far east side. Uh, uh, Eighth and Railroad. It's a it's a very popular place to 
to uh, to to shop and and to eat and stuff. It, there's if you go behind Eighth and Railroad, that's that 10 acres of land, okay? That that's out there. And if you go to the far east, the far east, there's two sets of tracks, and those are going to remain. Okay. Yeah, so good job. Be the ones that go out to Brandon then. Uh, they go they go they go really all over. They okay. still yeah. And that's one of the. You know, I know there's some people who just wish we'd get rid of the railroad tracks. No. Boy, oh boy, if there's one thing that you want other than water, okay. is you want railroad tracks. You do. Because you can't imagine the economic development impact that railroads and railroad tracks have on your town. Um, it's wonderful. You, you really want to, you know, we want to move, um, we want to move soybeans. We want to move um, big, big rock. We want to move chemicals. We want to move this. We want to move that. So you do want that ability to move stuff. Uh, and that's why this uh, new development park uh, called Foundation Park, one of the reasons we chose that site is because there's railroad tracks out there. And people were very excited about that. De uh, when, when new businesses come into town, one of the very first things that they ask for is water, if you can imagine that. They want water supply, because that's, that's a real scary thing, what's going on in our country right now. They want water, they like rail, they certainly want workforce, uh, safety, and good government, and things like that. But, but yeah, those railroad tracks are important, so good job. Hey, let's go back to John, and then we'll come back around there and, and wherever. Thank you. John, thank you. Yeah, I have two questions. I've been told that there's going to be another bypass built around the city. Good job. Okay, the next question, I think it's on 12th, the divide in the middle where you can't just go across. I, they got trees planted in them, trees. Now, you go on Highway 42 when you come in, you run into that. You can't, you know, if you're on the south side, want to go to the business on the north side, yeah. you got to go clear down and yes. back. I, th I think they shouldn't be put in. I Good really job. <laughs> Good job. The, I'm very impressed, John. Good job. I love it. it, it two, two things. He said, uh, uh, let's see, the first one, oh, is there going to be another bypass in our town? Um, and I think what, uh, what we're talking about is Highway 100. Highway 100. Uh, now it's called Veterans Parkway, okay? That will be a road that will really kind of almost uh, parallel 229. Okay, and it'll be a big road that goes around our town uh, from interstate to interstate. And we're working in collaboration with the state to make that happen. Uh, and, that's, and that's a big thing too. Uh, that'll help take, alleviate some of the pressure on some of these other roads too. Um, uh, so that's good. And then the other thing is, uh, John had mentioned, you know, what about these kind of, it's almost like a, a boulevard that's in the middle of the road uh, and it's done very intently. And the reason it's done is to make those roads safer. They want to stop the amount of turn, turning that goes on, especially in those busy roads. And I know in South Dakota, we are not used to that. You know, we're used to driving up to a business, we want to get in, we take a left, and we're in. Or we want to get out, we take a right, and we're out, okay? Now it's going to get, it's, it's going to become more and more difficult in our town. There will be more and more of those uh, kind of partitions built to make sure that you can't do that. Um, um, well, you do. You, you, more and more you'll see that you'll have to do these U-turns in order to get around or, or, or take these, uh, these other uh, access points. But, you know, again, our, our city is growing. Uh, we're implementing some of these things that you do in bigger cities. Um, roundabouts. <laughs> roundabouts was uh, something that John just said. You know, we've got a, we've got a couple already, and I would think that there will be more coming. Uh, they use them in Europe very in, in a very very big way. I personally, I really really like them. I really do. But but I know that uh, others are gonna. They're they're just not used to them. Uh, but. You don't have to stop. You don't when you know with a roundabout. You just keep going. Yeah, but but thank you. Good job. Uh, others. Yeah, let's go back here. Thank you. And very good job. Thank you. These are really good. You folks are engaged. I love it. I love it. 
my my only comment was going to be that when you are just when I've tried to watch this on television, yeah. you lose me when when you're answering somebody's question, but you're not specific enough about what they're talking about, like the railroad, and like she had to ask again where the railroad's at. So I was going to say if you could specifically address the streets and stuff that you're talking about. Well, talking I about. Uh, actually I did answer that question earlier. Uh, I said no, it was on the, the where, east side. Well, when you're talking to her, you know, you said, because I had exactly the same for the, the two, but what the 10 acres were, I wasn't aware of either, where exactly the 10 acres are. Are they between 8th and, are they between 10th uh, and 8th or 8th? And well, the 10 acres, they really start uh, uh, probably by Killian College, uh, which is closer to, to the Falls Park, and they, they go uh, until you get to the viaduct. Uh, and then it goes, you know, to the east, uh, till the railroad tracks, and and so it's it's kind of there's different partitions of land that is available, but for me to try to explain it to you in great detail uh, without a map, uh, you want confusion. That's a way that I can confuse you on TV pretty quickly. Uh, but good but job. Just, but just Do you have a specific question? Names. Just specific. Well, I I would say something else, but I think I better stop. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, please, Bob, and then we'll go back. Does anybody, and others, have your questions? I'd love to hear from you. And we've got some young people in the room. Too. You better ask some questions. Come on. Good job, Bob. Or, oh, we're going to go over here. Okay, where do you want to go, Val? Sure. You're in charge, Val. You're doing all the work, so thank you. Mayor, isn't it true that the basically east of Raven Industries to Weber Avenue, those tracks will stay? Uh, they'll remain. The other ones are west of that. Just the ones that are coming out are uh, east of Phillips Avenue and Main Avenue. Uh, and again, the, the, the simplest way that I can relay this to you folks, the, far, the farthest east side tracks are going to remain, yeah. two, two of them. That's the, the rest will be taken out. Okay? So, and then Bob, and then we'll go back here to Lurleen. Others? You ready? You're good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Bob? See, um, traffic is really busy here in Western Avenue. Yes. So why can't we, why can't there be a light right here in 46 and Western? That's right. I love it. I get that question every time I come to Active Generations. <laughs> I do, I do. Bob, good job. You did it again. Thank you. It's still, the, it's, we're still batting a thousand percent. And, and uh, basically, Yes, it is a very, very busy place. If you want to go left, right here on, what is that street, Bob? 46th Street, thank you, 46th Street. If you want to go left, and you're on 46th Street, and you're trying to get on Western, it is a real challenge. You're going to wait a while. Uh, and Bob, I know you folks say, when are you going to put a light there, Mayor? And we're not going to. And, and the reason being is that there's a light, there's a light, I could throw a rock and hit the next light that's already there. Uh, so, but but that's that's where this planning comes. In. Oh gosh. Okay, get ready. That's um, where this planning comes into place, in terms of uh, uh, making sure that we do it right. Now, we will continue to work with not only Active Generations, but with other citizens around here to try to maybe find ways to. Uh, if we don't do a light, maybe there's some other things that we can do. To, uh, to improve that safety around there. Uh, and, and that's where we have like Heath Hoftizer and the traffic engineers uh, and our police team to try to work with businesses like Active Generations and our nonprofits to the spirit of making it more safe. Um, but it is, a, it is a challenge. That is a really challenging uh, I intersection. Going right is, is easier certainly than going left. That's for sure. Good job. Val, are you going to help us? Well, you going to get us a light? Um, no, but <laughs> the, the arguments that we've heard in the other times that you've been here and mayors before was that we couldn't have a light because we're too close to the other two lights. But the point in the craw of the group around here is as soon as Shields changed things, all of a sudden they got a light. Yeah. But we still couldn't have a light when we were further away from the one on 41st than Shields is. And we're for, you know, closer to 49th, of course, but further away from 41st. I know there's no fix, but that's what, that, that's what the, the grumbling around here was about. And Val, I, um, 
what I can do is I can have Heath Hofteiser uh, give you the specifics about if he, if he would want to write an article that we could put in our newspaper to explain that, that would be fantastic. Heath Hofteiser is one of the most popular speakers in our town. <laughs> everybody, everybody wants to talk about traffic lights, stop signs, they and you know things like. It is the toughest job, but he, he loves it. Val, I don't know. I, I don't know the dimensions of I'm, I'm of that. Like, that was that was the. I, I know it's not a solution, but that was just the grumbling that was Val, can I ask you? Can you? Get, just write a note, uh, Mayor Heath <laughs> Shields. Okay, okay? Got it. Mayor <laughs> Heath Shields. Got it. And then I'll get you a, an email, and then you can share it with with all your team. That would be great. Thank you. Good. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Thank you. Let's go back here, and then you had a question too, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. They told me that they couldn't have a traffic light more than every three blocks. Is why 46 didn't get one. Thank you. I don't know. They told you every three blocks, and I don't know what, if it's blocks or if it's feet. I don't know, but I I do I, I do believe it has based on distance between light A and light B. That's what I think. So good job. Yes, you had a comment. What about the intersection at North Marion and 60th Street? Is that ever going to be straight so that when you go across the highway, Marion meets Marion on the other side? Uh, it does, I that it go straight. well. First of all, you are the most interested audience I've ever had <laughs> in my five and a half years uh, when it comes to specific streets in our town, and I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, yes, out there, that area of town is again probably our our most booming part of town. If you can imagine that, northwest is just booming, uh, rooftops everywhere. Businesses everywhere. Uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's really booming and, and it's, it's quite exciting. So what I would tell you is that Marion and 60th Street North, uh, if it's not being uh, uh, in, strengthened in terms of those roads today, my gut says it'll be tomorrow. Uh, because that, that area of town, that we are putting a lot of money out there uh, and, and there's more coming. There really is. You know, that, that Super Walmart out there, uh, now, what happens whenever there's a super Walmart, everything around it develops in a big way. And that's what's happening out there. And now we've got the super Walmart on the south part of town. Uh, that one is, all, is being developed. And you're going to see that thing booming as well. So good job. Good job. Uh, yes, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, I don't have a question. I just came to listen. Yes. And I hope people don't say, who is she? What she's doing here? Uh, my name is Deborah Ding, and I'm Hi. from, um, I was born in South Sudan, been here for 15 years. And I realized the only time you talk to politicians is when they're running. So I know you're not going to be running, so I know I'm not going to meet you anymore. So I put my name on the mailing list, and today I saw, yesterday actually, I saw you were going to speak here, and I was like, what's the better way to spend my line break? I'll just go and... Uh, listen. So I'm just. I have a thousand questions, but not right now, because you guys are talking about the street, and my head hurts because I don't know. <laughs> so, so did you say you want to be in in public service? I I, I want to learn as much as I can. Love I, it. Yeah. So maybe your next meeting, I'll be there. But right now, my line break is over, and I'm just gonna have to leave. Where did I, you come from in terms of where are you working? And you I just work came for Lutheran Social Services. You do. Yeah. Well, great. Well, yeah, we're. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're, before you leave, for, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, no one went ooh when anybody Hope comes not. here. Uh, <laughs> it's it's one of the it's one of the great things about Active Generations. Everybody is welcome here. Thank uh, you. It, it's, we're, we're Val. Eighteen and over. Eighteen, 18 and over. Okay. okay, I'm over. I mean, everybody's <laughs> and uh, everybody's welcome here. Uh, it's a it, it's a great it's a great value uh, and quality of life investment for for our city. Uh, it, it's just great. And uh, as for the only time that you'll get a chance to meet me is if I'm running, uh, I'm, I apologize. You got something more. That's not true. Uh, when I was running for mayor, uh, yes, absolutely. I, I did these listening and learning sessions when I was running for mayor. And I made a commitment. And, you know, your first name was? Deborah. Deborah. And I talked to you when you Deborah, were running. Deborah, I made mm -hmm. a commitment when I was, uh, I said, if, I was, if I'm elected mayor, 
I'm going to keep doing these things uh, until I'm done being your mayor. Uh, so I do them every, every 30 days, uh, and I do them all over the city, and everybody's invited. And there's a rule, and you know the rule. There are no rules. <laughs> you can ask me anything. And it's just been wonderful. I, I've had the most interesting conversations with the people that I serve over the last five and a half years. Uh, you never know what you're going to get in a, in, a, in a setting like this or wherever I go. Uh, but, but I am your mayor. And I'm supposed to, you know, take it uh, no matter what comes my way because that's the way that it is. You have to, you serve everybody. Uh, you do. And, and we may not always agree. Lurleen, right? Lurleen and I, is it ready? Did you get the camera on Lurleen yet today? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's the reality. Here's the reality. Lurleen and I, we do not agree on everything that's going on in our town. I think that that's fair. Is that fair? I've been here longer. No, boss, okay. <laughs> she's, she's been here longer, and she's earned, she's earned it and more. But we, we don't agree on everything. That's obvious. But I love how you know, we're still engaging each other. Mm -hmm. We are. We are. We can agree to disagree. Uh, and, and here's the thing. I am your mayor, and I am Lurleen's mayor, and Deborah, I'm your mayor, and John, I'm your mayor. Where'd John go? John was over there. <laughs> John, I'm your, wherever John's at, there's John. John, I'm your mayor. And, uh, and, and even though we may not agree on everything, I still, I'm, I'm, I love serving you. I just do. And uh, we'll find common ground. We, we'll compromise. We will communicate, Deborah. We will. And uh, ultimately, we'll, we'll do good things for this town. So, so good job, good job. And uh, how am I doing for time? What can I ask what time it is? About 2.10. Do, okay, good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, so. Uh, go ahead, uh, Sunday, Bob. Sunday, I'm going with the Center for Active Generation to see the Minnesota Twins and the Los Angeles Angels. Well, very good. Have a, have a good time. Thank you. Have a good time. So you're going to spend your money outside of town? <laughs> we spend it right here. Yeah, well, I know you do. Thank you. Thank you. Lorraine, go ahead. I worry uh, about the drainage pits. Oh, very good. No, it's very I good. mean, uh, now we have more. Uh, you, we had a drainage pit at Spillerberg and down at Dan Dugan. And um, I, yeah. I was a city employee for 24 years. Thank you. I've been a dispatcher for the water department. Thank I've you. had a real estate license. And I mean, I'm just in town. I can't afford to go out of town, so I'm involved in my city. And I worry about the more we grow, we need more water. Yeah. Are we concerned about that? You, you build all, you mm -hmm. take away all the land so we don't have drainage yep. and we don't have gardens and we have all these high rise and I don't feel like that's quality of living myself because I'm still maintaining, I'm 82 and I still have my little house and I'm crippled and all that but I, I like to pull weeds and whatever. Um, I'm just worried about sometimes less is more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Maybe I'm old-fashioned mm. and I'm out of touch, mm. but I'm a realist. And I want to, every time I move in the city, I've been in the crime area. I've lived on 8th Street to, to Grange and all around, and I've taken care of people that come in that are, are, are in jail now and, and I, from the arch, and I've been involved in all kinds of people. And I just want quality living and honest and integrity and I, I just don't want this crime area to be infested. It's, it was so nice and I just wanted to become better, not worse. I, I love Sioux Falls, I really do. But I came from Colton and that's a small community and, yep. and they were the hard week people that came in, homesteaded and all that and so I'm just from the old country, I guess. Thank you. Well, Lurleen, I, I, I loved what you just got done saying. And, and you could have heard a pin drop as you were speaking. Um, because I, I think you speak for probably you know, all of us in, in some way. Um, we, we do want you know, it to be a safe place to live. Uh, we want it to be a, you know, a, a great place of quality to live. 
Um, uh, we have to care about things like, like drainage oh, and right. water and, and all that. And, and uh, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, we kind of started this program with Lurleen talking about, you know, she was worried about the, the growth and worried about the challenges of growth. And, and wouldn't it be nice to kind of go back to the way that, that it was? And, and Lurleen, I, I get it, I do. There are, there are certainly these benefits to... Uh, I don't want to, to be San Francisco. Yep, yep, I get it, yep, uh, to being smaller. Um, but I think the reality is, is that this city has a consistent pattern of growth. And um, it's going to continue. Uh, it is. And so I think you just try to do the best uh, that, that you can. You, you try to keep it safe. Uh, you try to do your best to make sure it's a good place to live, work, and play. Uh, you plan accordingly uh, so that, you know, it's things like drainage, which you care about, you got to make sure that, that you care about that too. I mean, we did. We had, a, we had an eight inches of rain in about, in about three hours, and we actually had a flood. I mean, can you imagine? I, during, I, I, I couldn't believe it, but we, we had a flood in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I mean, that's just unheard of. And when I lived in San Antonio, yes, you could have a flood there, but not a flood in Sioux Falls. And we actually had a flood in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And so drainage and is, is oh, yep. I, did you put, the, say, what did you just say? <laughs> we have an asphalt jungle. That, that I, I think that it's very fair. I think it's very fair. I, I do. I, we have a lot of asphalt over in an area of town that got uh, about 1.3 inches of rain, uh, you know, in about 10 minutes. I mean, what? It's just insane. Yeah, that, that, that makes no sense. Uh, uh, you know, 10 inches of rain in, in an hour? That's, that's, how, that's how fast that rain was going. In an asphalt jungle, like, like Lurleen is, is talking about. So, so again, I, um, I, I hear you, um, and I commend you for, number one, uh, being such a, 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 a long-term resident of, of Sioux Falls, I also love the fact that you're, you're living at home, still pulling your weeds. Uh, you know, I love that. And, and guess what? You're very engaged in your town. You're very engaged in your town. All, everybody is. I, I mean, this has been really, uh, and I'm not just blowing steam. This has been, it's been a really good program. Uh, you've, talked, you've talked about a lot of stuff in our town, so it's, it's been great. So good job. Give me another tough one. Deborah gave me a tough one. She said, Mayor, the only, you know, but, yeah, oh, thank you. Thanks so much, Bob. Appreciate it. Yes. We'll go right here. Val? How about, how about we'll do a, does anybody else have any questions, too? Washington any? Square, do we need it? Oh, okay, well, I'll come back. There. Maybe we'll end on that. Go ahead. Um, have they determined what the rates are going to be for the indoor swimming pool? Oh, good pool? job. That was a question that Lurleen yeah. kind of, like, kind of alluded to, too. Um, the, the question was, look, they're fighting over the microphone. I love that. They want to be on CityLink so bad that now they're fighting over the... <laughs> um, the question was, have they determined the rates for the indoor pool yet? Uh, the answer is that I, no, they, they've not. Uh, that's the city council. Uh, they actually have the ability to determine these fees or these rates or these charges that we have. They've not done that. But I, I, I don't want to speak for the council in any way, shape, or form. I don't. But Lurleen, I think that we'll find good balance to make sure that it is accessible for everyone in, in town. Uh, it, it, it will be. Uh, you know, it's not a place for just the elite. It's not a place just for uh, uh, competitive swimmers. Uh, it is, it, truly it is. It's a place for young and old, rich or poor, black or white, uh, whether you can swim or not, it is a place for everybody and it will be accessible. Good job, okay. thank you, yeah. go ahead. Well, I'd just like to make a couple of comments about what you said about the city going, growing. Yes. Many years ago, 40 years ago, I worked with the foreman for foreman. And uh, back in, must be like when he was in the Korean conflict. And after that fact, he had the chance to buy, I don't know, an acre or two of ground out by 12th and Kiwanis. He was getting $90 a month from the military. And that's what it would cost him for that land. He didn't because that was his cigarette and beer money. And besides that, he was told that Sioux Falls was never going to get that big. 
and my granddad, who was in the construction business for many years, he was gonna buy it, I don't know, a city block or two over there by, somewhere by Woodland Cemetery. And he was a stubborn Norwegian, never, at that time he listened to somebody else. And he was told, don't buy it. Who wants to live across the street from a cemetery? Yeah. I do, right yeah. now. No. Yeah. Well, good job. I, I think, uh, I mean, reality is, it's not going to happen during my next two and a half years, but, but very, very soon, the city of T and the city of Sioux Falls, we're going to be holding hands, okay? The city of Sioux Falls, uh, the city of Harrisburg, we're going to be holding hands. Uh, the city of Sioux Falls, the city of Brandon, we're going to be holding hands. Uh, Hartford, I don't know how, if it's going to take a while, but I think the reality is someday we'll probably be holding hands with Hartford too. So, uh, Lurleen, you've been here a long time. You can, you can only imagine the amount of, you know, soybeans. They used, to, they used to raise soybeans, used to be alfalfa fields, used to be corn fields, used to be swimming holes, uh, used to shoot, you know, rabbits or coyotes or whatever it would be. Well, now there's a strip mall there or there's a home there. So uh, we are, that, that, that is good, that is good. Lurleen asked a question um, on Washington Square, and then we'll, we'll end with you, and I look forward to it. Uh, I've already got the, I already got the question. Lurleen asked, uh, she said, what about Washington Square? Do we really need that? Um, folks, Washington Square, what that is, is it's a private development right in the heart of our downtown. And it's actually across the street from the Washington Pavilion, okay? And um, uh, these private developers, dreamers, investors, builders, uh, they're, they're dreaming quite big, and they want to do a, a really grand investment there. And so what they were looking for is kind of a public-private partnership with uh, something that's called TIFF. And I'm not going to get into too much detail. Um, uh, um, if you're probably confuse everybody anyway. But really, it's... a uh, it's a way that the city can, can participate with a private developer in the spirit of getting something built uh, for our town. And so, Lurleen, your question, do you, do, what do you think about that? I personally am, am very much in favor of it. I am. I am. Again, I think it's one of those things where, where we can, I'll just give you a couple of reasons. Number one, it is a grand vision. Uh, you know, it, it's neat. It's places to live, places to work, places to play, uh, uh, some parking, uh, right, in, right in the heart of our downtown. As well as, here's something that I'm really, really excited about, in that we can grow out, okay? We can take up more bean fields, more corn fields, more swimming holes. We can do that. Or we can take the land that we already have in our town that's developed all around it, and we can use that land to, 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 to develop, to grow. And so we have a piece of land right in the heart of our downtown that really hasn't been fully utilized. And so to me, uh, as well as a developer and, and the city council and others, they said, well, why not take that land and do something grand with it? Because we got development all the way around it. Why don't we do that? And so, uh, yes, I'm very much in favor of it. I'm glad that we were able to, to work in concert with that developer, with that dreamer, with that investor to find a, 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 an amount of TIF that we believe serves the taxpayers very, very well. So good job. Before I go to our last question, if I can just say this, I've had a blast. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, I really do. I enjoy it. It's good to be back at Active Generations. You folks are definitely active. I'll tell you that. You're engaged in this town. You know what's going on. You're keeping up. Uh, and I just, I'm thrilled by it. Uh, so please, you know, invite me back. Uh, I'm not doing that ukulele thing with the, uh, in, you know, in drag. I'm not. But, but I, I would love to be back. I'd love to be back and, and really do thank you. Uh, for, for that. So let's, uh, that, that question, please, would you, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Tell us your name, please. Jillian. Jillian. And are, are you uh, an intern here? At, at, yes. You are, at, at Active, Active Generations. Generations. Yep. So, great. What do you, uh, can I ask what you're studying? Social work. Social work. Well, yep. you're at a perfect place. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was just interested, I guess, in 
knowing, like we talked about some of the concerns that people have here, what is the most reoccurring like thing that people either complain about or want changed for like that they come to you and are like, Mayor, we want this done. What do you hear the most of, I guess, from Sioux Falls? My goodness gracious, I can't believe. What is the thing that people want changed the most uh, here, here in Sioux Falls, the greatest concern? Well, I think that there's probably a, a, a couple. Um, I do hear from folks like Lurleen, like Lurleen who say, you know, Mayor, are we going to be able to keep, keep one step ahead of growth? I, I think that that's a, that's a concern. Uh, always people are concerned with, uh, you know, with safety. Always a concern. And, and you know, now we live in a, in, in, a, uh, uh, in, in a lifestyle where if there's a, if a, if a come and go uh, is, is busted into, you're, you, you know about it on your phone just like that. So we, we hear about these things so quickly. You know, everything is just immediate. And that's why it, it just seems like, oh my gosh, you know, all this stuff is going on in just such a higher pace, when in reality, it, it's not. Uh, it's not, but but safety is always Im important. Um, though I will tell you the one thing that I that I used to hear, and I don't hear it anymore. Uh, when I was running for mayor, or when I was living here in Sioux Falls, the thing that I heard all the time um, was this: It was, you know, we need to create an environment where our young people will want to stay. You know, because moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, they kept seeing their young people moving out of state um, to live or to, to get a job. And that was always the big concern, uh, was, that, was that that was happening. I don't hear that anymore. I, and I don't, because we, what's happening is that we've got not only young people staying in, in Sioux Falls, uh, finding places to live, work, and play, but one of the things that's exciting is that we have people now coming back. People are coming back to Sioux Falls. They're coming back to retire. They're coming back to work. They're coming back to raise their family. They're just coming back. And that is something that I'm just thrilled by. Uh, I really love the progress that we've made. And I, I'm excited about our future. Uh, um, you know, are we doing everything perfectly? No, we're not. We're not. But, uh, you know, we were just named the number the 10th most livable city in America. The 10th most livable city in America. And, and it was, the criteria was not, you know, cities 100,000 or bigger. The criteria was cities 25,000 in population or bigger. So can you imagine all the cities in America that are 25,000 25, people or bigger. And this city, your city, your town, was named top 10 in America. We're doing something right. We're doing something right. Uh, we really are, and, and for that, you know, we're blessed. And for that, uh, I'm just blessed to be your mayor. Uh, and, and, and so thank you for, for doing this today. My goodness, what a great program. Uh, I think people are really going to enjoy this one. They, they will. And so, so uh, can we, let's give Val a round of applause for walking around. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and also, I, I do want to thank Active Generations as well. Uh, they have been so kind to me. Even when I was running for mayor, they at least allowed me to come in here and engage the people, you know, to, to listen and learn. And now that I've been serving as your mayor, I come here quite often. Uh, um, and, and I really enjoy it, and, and so I want to thank Active Generations. You know, one of the things that, uh, that we need, we probably need to, we need more Active Generations. We do, because one thing that's happened, we are, we, we are being recognized as one of the top cities in America to retire at. There was a publication about a year and a half ago that named Sioux Falls, South Dakota in the top five in America in terms of places to retire, and reality is, People are retiring in Sioux Falls in droves. They're coming here. Well, uh, let's, oh, let's stop, let's not stop. That was good, that was good, that's a reality. Uh, we'll, we'll go back and you, you'll have to tell, 
would you repeat that, please? Thank you. No, no. You repeat that, please. I think that's good. And then we'll end it. Then we'll end it. That was a good one. I asked why you did, couldn't get more affordable housing for the elderly. Very good. Very good. That, I, think, I think that's an excellent way to end the program. The, the comment was, so why can't you get more affordable housing for uh, seniors? And can I ask your name, please? Your first name? Joyce. Joyce. Joyce, here's one of the realities of a growing city. And it, 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 Joyce, you're spot on. In a growing city, when you've got three to 4,000 people moving into your city every year, one of the greatest challenges that you face is affordable housing. Because even that cheaper housing is so valuable that it becomes more expensive to live there. The rent goes up. The, the amount it costs to buy a home goes up. And it really stretches the dollar. And uh, Joyce, that is, it is not only a concern for seniors, it's a concern for everybody. It is. Especially people on limited incomes. If you've got a limited income, or if you're working for minimum wage or places or things like that, Joyce, it is an incredible challenge. And, uh, and it's one of the greatest challenges that we have in our city right now. It is. Uh, kind of going back to, to, to your comment about, you know, one of the things, affordable housing is a big one. Uh, it's a big one. And, and uh, uh, we do have, we're going to break the city's construction record this year again. It'll be the fourth year. We're going to break it again. And the thing that we're building like crazy are apartments and condos and uh, uh, um, uh, more affordable housing, things like that, but it's still not nearly enough to keep up. No, good job, Joyce. Very good job. Uh, I, I, it's a it's a reality. Affordable housing is is so so such a challenge in in Sioux Falls. Uh, and then the other challenge is, and, and, uh, is, is this, and there's a bunch of them. But another one is we and and he, this is gonna it's gonna sound like a dichotomy, okay? Because here we are, we've got Joyce saying, Mayor, we need more affordable housing because of all the people moving in, okay? Now, Joyce, get ready. Get ready. You know what our other issue is? Yeah, lack of workers. <laughs> Come here, give me that. <laughs> God dang it. Lurleen? She's on the job. Every time you, you, uh, Lurleen, just say it. Just say it. What did you say? Well, lack of workers. But if we didn't do the construction, we wouldn't need the workers. Well, uh, my life. Uh, Joyce? Joyce? Joel, are you getting this? Is this a program or what? Sioux Falls, let me just tell you, if you've not watched the Listening and Learning program before, uh, if this doesn't get you to watch it, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. But it's, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Here I've got Joyce saying, Mayor, would you take this vow? What are you doing? Uh, uh, I've got, here I've got Joyce saying, Mayor, we don't have enough places to live, and it costs too much to live in Sioux Falls, especially if you're on a limited income. And then all of a sudden, I got Lurleen saying, but Mayor, we need more workers. And you know what? We do. We do. I just came from a meeting where we had all the community, a, a, lot, of, a lot of community leaders, and our, one, of, one of our other greatest challenges, we need workers. We've got 3,000 job openings right now, and we can't find enough people to work. We, we, can't, we can't find enough people to work. And it is really a, it's really a struggle. Um, uh, I'll kind of give you some example. I, I, just, I, I was at a funeral yesterday, and we were, we were having lunch. And by the way, I, I love... Uh, uh, T-bun sandwiches with butter and ham, love it. Um, so here I am, I'm eating my T-bun sandwich with, with, with uh, butter and ham, and I was talking to one of the people across the way, and, and they said, you know, hey, Mayor, uh, I work for, uh, for one of the local bus companies, School Bus Incorporated here in town. You know, they need bus drivers for, for kids, to get kids back and forth to school. I said, Mayor, we put an ad in the Sioux Falls Argus Leader to try to get people to, ride, to, to drive buses. Mayor, we put an ad in, on Kelloland. And all of a sudden he goes, Mayor, guess how many people that we had apply for those, for those jobs? And I said, I, I don't know. And he goes, just like this, he goes, 
We had zero for this, and we had zero for that. And that's just a small one. That's just a small one. That's a small one. There's, there's others. That I can give you example upon example. They just said, and they called it this. They called it this. They said it's a crisis for Sioux Falls. It's a crisis. We need workers, and we can't get them. And so, I mean, what a dichotomy. Uh, on one hand, you know, we're struggling to find affordable housing because of all the people moving into town. And at the other hand, we don't have enough workers to keep up with the, all the opportunities that we have in this, in this growing city. But, but let me just end it with this, okay? I love those problems. I love them. I'll tell you, I'd rather be Sioux Falls and have our, our problems and our challenges. You know, record construction, uh, the, one of the lowest unemployment rates in, in America, sales tax sales taxes coming in at, 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 in levels that you get, confidence abounding, people dreaming, people investing, people growing, people moving into town, people wanting to live in Sioux Falls. I would rather have those problems than some of the other problems that are going on in America. Uh, and, and so again, it's a great city, good things happening. Can we do better? You bet, Joyce. You bet, Lurleen. And we're going to keep working on it. Thank you, everybody. Make it a great, great day. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.